the magnetic compass. No other single invention was more important to the science of navigation. In this lesson, you will learn how a compass and magnets work. You'll learn the history of the compass and how to use a compass to orient your map and to fix your position on that map. Once you have finished this lesson, you should be ready to draw your map. The compass. It's an instrument as basic to navigation as any other. However, it was only developed about a thousand years ago. The exact origins of the magnetic compass are uncertain, however, Norsemen used it in the 11th century and Chinese navigators used the magnetic compass at least that earlier and probably even earlier. It was not until the 1870s that Lord Kelvin developed a reliable dry card marine compass. The fluid-filled compass became standard in 1906 and continues to be the standard form of compass to this day. Let's look in the past now and see how these compasses have evolved and what makes them so special for navigation. Let's travel now to the 2nd century BC, sometime during the Han Dynasty in ancient China. This spoon-shaped device is actually a compass. It was referred to as a south pointer, and it sat on a cast bronze plate called a he heaven plate or diviner's board. The heaven plate had different directions based on constellations as well as lunar phases. Often, the Big Dipper or Great Bear was drawn in the center of the disk. These early compasses were often used for geometry, for building, but it was a long time before they would be used for navigation. Ancient Chinese alchemists realized that the magnetic ore in the lodestones would point towards a magnetic north. However, their understanding was not total since they thought that they were both north pointers and south pointers, that different materials would point towards either the north or south pole. They did not fully understand the principle of magnetism. By the time of the Sang Dynasty, in the 7th to 8th century AD, Chinese scholars had devised a way to magnetize iron needles by rubbing them with a lodestone and then suspending them in water in the early 11th century. They had also observed that needles cooled from red heat and held in the north-south orientation of the Earth's axis would become magnetic. These more refined needle compasses could then be floated in water. They could be placed on a pointed shaft or suspended from a silk thread. As a result, they were much more useful for navigation purposes since they were now much more portable and smaller. During the Sung Dynasty in 1000 AD, many trading ships were then able to sail as far as Saudi Arabia without getting lost. The plate was converted to a bowl and retained the markings of the heavens plate around its circumference in a simplified form. The inner circle retained the 24 directions of the constellations. Magnetism. It's the force exerted by magnets when they attract or repel each other. Magnetism is caused by the motion of electric charges. Every substance in the universe is made up of tiny units called atoms. Each atom has electrons, which are particles that carry electric charges. They spin like tops, circling the nucleus or core of an atom. That movement generates an electric current and causes each electron to act like a microscopic magnet. In most substances, equal numbers of electrons spin in opposite directions, which cancels out their magnetism. That is why materials such as cloth or paper are said to be weakly magnetic. In some substances, such as iron, cobalt, and nickel, most of the electrons spin in the same direction. This makes the atoms in these substances strongly magnetic, but they are not yet magnets. 
To become magnetized, another strongly magnetic substance must enter the magnetic field of an existing magnet. The magnetic field is the area around a magnet that has magnetic force. All magnets have north and south poles. Opposite poles are attracted to each other, while the same poles repel each other. When you rub a piece of iron along a magnet, the north-seeking poles of the atoms in the iron line up in the same direction. The force generated by the aligned atoms creates a magnetic field. It's like when you comb your hair in the morning. When you wake up, your hair is in all different directions, just like the north-seeking poles of those atoms. By running the comb through your hair, all of your individual hairs are straightened out and face the same direction. Just like rubbing a magnet along the piece of iron causes all of those north-seeking poles to all line up in the same direction. The Earth is a magnet. And while scientists don't fully understand why, they think that the movement of molten metal deep in the Earth's outer core generates electric currents. The currents create a magnetic field with invisible lines of force flowing between the Earth's magnetic poles. The geographic poles are not the same as the North and South Poles. Earth's magnetic poles often move due to activity far beneath the Earth's surface. The shifting locations of the geomagnetic poles are recorded in rocks that form when molten material called magma comes up through the Earth's crust and pours out as lava. As lava cools and becomes solid rock, strongly magnetic particles within the rock become magnetized by the Earth's magnetic field. The particles line up along the lines of force in the Earth's field. In this way, rocks lock in a record of the position of the Earth's geomagnetic poles at that time. A magnetic compass works by seeking out the Earth's north magnetic pole. In this way, compasses always point in the direction of magnetic north. To show how a magnet works and how a compass works, you can make a compass at home. All you need are a small saucer or a bowl filled with a little bit of water, something that will float, like a cork, and a small lightweight piece of metal. A sewing needle will work well, but you could also use a straightened out paper clip. You'll also need a magnet. Grab one off of your refrigerator. When you take the magnet and rub it along the needle in the same direction, if you do that about 20 times, you will straighten out all of the poles in that piece of iron. All of the poles will now line up in the same direction. Place the floating object, such as the cork, in the water in the dish. Now carefully place the needle on top of the cork. If you'd like, you can tape it on with a piece of tape to help it stick. Watch what happens as the needle moves the needle will seek out the north pole of the earth. You can check that the, magnet, that the needle is magnetized by holding up the magnet that you just used to magnetize the needle with, and if you bring it close, the magnet will attract the needle to it. If you take the magnet away, the needle will again find the earth's magnetic pole. This is how compasses work. Types of compasses available for scouts are numerous, but a multi-purpose map style one, like the one shown, is the best type for using with a map. Another common type looks like this, and it is referred to as an engineer's or surveyor's compass. These make taking bearings easy, but can be difficult to use with a map to plot your position. Let's get to know your compass. The different parts of the compass help us to turn our map or orient our map so that it will line up with your surroundings. There is a rotating bezel that allows you to check the direction of landmarks and shoot bearings. The straight edges of the compass can be used like a ruler to plot a line of position. Multiple lines of position will give you a fix, which is the position on the map of your location on the earth. We'll start slow and go one step at a time until you understand how it works, but 
Lots of practice is the only way to really learn how to use a map and a compass together. The first step in fixing your location, or determining where you are located on a map, is to first orient the map using your compass and the compass rows on the map. First, set your bezel so that the orienting arrow is lined up with the north index line. Now, line up your compass with the north compass rows on your map. You can also line it up on a line of longitude since they run north and south. Now, holding the compass in line with the map, rotate both together until the needle on the compass is pointing due north. Now your map is facing the same direction as the land and the landmarks around you. The map is oriented. Getting a fix. A fix is marking where you are on a map. Suppose you are lost in the woods. With your map oriented, you notice a tall mountain peak on the map and see one in the distance. You also see a tall tree that is marked on the map. Finally, a radio tower is visible on the map. These landmarks can tell you where you are. You can use your compass to record the direction to each landmark from where you are standing. This is called shooting a bearing. A landmark is said to bear a direction like north or south, or more specifically some number of degrees indicated by your compass. Drawing the line of bearing of a landmark on a map results in a line of position. Your exact location is where two or more lines of position intersect or cross over. That is called getting a fix on your position. The first step in obtaining a fix is to accurately shoot a bearing to a landmark. Let's practice with this tree. While aiming the direction of travel arrow at the tree, we turn the bezel so that the orienting arrow inside the bezel is lined up with the compass needle, which is facing north. You can use your index finger in front of the direction of travel arrow to help you sight the bearing. Be sure to hold the compass flat so that the compass needle can move freely to point north. Now that you know how to shoot a bearing, Let's plot a line of position on our oriented map. We look on the map for a suitable landmark. In this case, we'll shoot a bearing to the intersection of two roads down the street. Carefully rotate the bezel to match the alignment arrow with the needle and record the bearing at the index line. In our case, the intersection bears 160 degrees from our position, so we write that down on our map while we look for another landmark. Let's try a tall tree. We repeat the process and obtain a bearing of 020 degrees from where we are standing to the tree and write that down on the map. Now we are ready to plot our lines of position. To plot a line of position, 
start by setting the bezel to the bearing you took. With the bezel set, line up the inner orienting arrows with the north compass rows on your map. Now carefully move the compass keeping the orienting arrows parallel with north on the map until one of the straight edges of the compass is over the landmark. Holding the compass in position and using a pencil, draw a line from the landmark toward the direction from which you took your bearing. Having an oriented map makes drawing the line from the landmark in the correct direction much easier. We repeat the process for our second bearing to the tree and circle where the two lines intersect. This is our approximate position. Congratulations! Now you know how to fix your position on a map by shooting bearings. Now, knowing where you are, you can use the compass to find the direction from there to your destination. But, it would help to know how far you have to go. You can estimate distances by measuring how far each one of your steps is. Use a tape measure and take normal steps starting with your left foot and only counting each time your left heel hits the ground. Now, using a calculator, divide the distance you walked by the number of steps you counted. That is how many feet per step you walk. You can use that to measure distances to help find your way and to draw a map. In the next lesson, we'll put all of this knowledge together and make a map.